Hey folks, welcome back. I'm finally sharing another data science series. This video is the first in a three-part series on causality. So this idea of causality is mainly based on the work of Judea Pearl and other researchers working in this space. Pearl actually has a very accessible book out called The Book of Why geared toward a public audience, which I will share in the description. In this video, I will introduce this idea of causality, kind of highlight why traditional statistics um, isn't the most helpful for understanding it, and then finally introducing a new mathematical formulism for understanding causality. If you want to dive a bit more into the details, check out the blog, which I will link in the description. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. What you're probably thinking is, why is there a banana on the screen? Why did I click on this YouTube video? So we are constantly asking ourselves, why? Why did this happen? What is the cause of this? Or where is this going? What's the effect? We ask ourselves why to help us craft stories, narratives, to help us make sense of the world. And even though this is a very natural thing for us, in understanding and reasoning. One of our most powerful tools in statistics is in many ways inadequate for handling cause and effect. I'll try to highlight these inadequacies with what I call the three traps of statistics. The first trap we have is spurious correlation. So this is a statistical correlation with no causal implication. So this is like the old saying, correlation is not causation. And you don't have to look far to find examples of this. Uh, there's a website, uh, tylerviggin.com. I have it at the bottom left here, and I'll link in the description as well. So here we have a case where we have a spurious correlation. So the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlates with the number of films Nicolas Cage appeared in. So even though this relationship is hilarious, it is not causal because we know these two things are not causally uh, related to each other. Correlation is not causation, which is something that we all know. So Spurry's correlation is pretty well known. We've all heard correlation is not causation. Uh, however, trap number two is less well known, and this is Simpson's paradox, which basically um, highlights that how you look at your data matters. So let's imagine we do a study for an experimental treatment for heart disease, and we collect a bunch of data, and we plot it. So on the x-axis, we have our experimental treatment. This could be a drug or behavioral protocol. The y-axis, we have risk of heart disease. And if we look at the plot, we would say to ourselves, this is a terrible treatment for heart disease. It seems the more treatment someone gets, the higher the risk of heart disease. However, if we were to look at two subpopulations, say men and women, we would get the exact opposite effect. So this is summarized nicely by a quote from the man himself, Judea Pearl, who said, we have a treatment that's good for a man, good for a woman, but bad for a person. Here's another example of Simpson's Paradox, but with numbers. Uh, I took this from uh, the Wikipedia page on Simpson's Paradox. So here we have batting averages of Derek Jeter and David Justice over the years 1995 and 1996. So if you were to look at those two years individually, you see that David Justice has a better batting average. But if you were to combine those two years together, uh, Derek Jeter has a better batting average. So again, how you look at your data, what variables you condition on, how you slice your data set has an impact on the conclusions that you can make. The final trap of statistics is symmetry, which from many perspectives isn't much of a setback, but when you're talking about something like causality, which is inherently asymmetric, it can cause some issues. So I'll highlight this uh, by an example. Let's say we want to model the causal effect between a disease and the severity of symptoms. So we model this by a linear expression. So y is the severity of a symptom, x is the severity of a disease, b is all other factors involved, and m is just a coefficient that relates x and y. But here we have an equal sign. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. That's what 
equals means. So that means using algebra, we can rearrange this expression to get a equation of x in terms of y. But here's the problem. If we interpret the first equation as diseases cause symptoms, then we have to interpret the second equation as symptoms cause disease, which is not true. We know that's not true. So this fundamental symmetry makes algebra perhaps not the best formulism for representing causality. So this whole video is supposedly an introduction on causality, and I have not defined what it is. There are a few ways we can define causality. Uh, the one I like is X causes Y if when all confounders are adjusted, an intervention in X results in the change in Y. But an intervention in Y does not necessarily change X. So I have a little cartoon here. Let's say we have four variables, X, W, Z, and Y. If we intervene in X, that means we jiggle it a bit. We, if X causes Y, we'll see Y jiggle as well. However, if X causes Y, but Y does not cause X, if we intervene in Y, that is we jiggle Y a bit, X will not respond. So that's causality. It is fundamentally asymmetric. So if we can't use algebra, which relies on symmetry, it has this equal sign, how can we represent causality? So there are these so-called structural causal models, which is the kind of way we can represent causality. And this consists of two parts. One is a directed acyclic graph, or a DAG. So this is a type of graph, which comes from the mathematical uh, field of graph theory, which consists of vertices, these circles here, and edges, which are these arrows. And this is called a directed graph because the lines connecting the different uh, circles together have arrowheads on them. So that's called a directed graph because the information, so to speak, flows in one direction. And it's acyclic because if you start at a vertex or one of these circles and you follow the arrowheads, you'll never return back to the same variable or the same vertex. So that's a directed acyclic graph. And then there's a second part, which are the structural equation models. So these are equations that kind of outline the details of the causal connections. And so they have these funny looking equal signs here, which is basically saying you can't invert these expressions. For example, you can't invert F sub one to get an equation for X in terms of W. So these are two key pieces of causality. So that was the first video in the three-part series on causality. In the next video, we will be applying this idea to answering practical real-world questions with causal inference. If you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting your thoughts. If you're interested in diving a bit more into the details, uh, check out the blog on Medium. Thanks for watching.